Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is The Savage Nation. <clears throat> you say, so what's the big deal? George Orwell said, in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. And I guess you might say, therefore, I am a revolutionary. And my criticisms of Pope Francis's message, I want all you good believing Catholics to understand something. I criticize the message, not the church. Yes, I have to defend myself because many of you don't know how to separate the message from the church itself or the message from the messenger. But even in this case, the message and the messenger are one and the same. He is a diehard Peronista politically. He comes from the Peron school of socialism. That's what he grew up with, that's what he expresses, that's what he's been doing. He's been criticizing our way of life, our economic way of life since the 1990s. He's a good friend of the Castros, both politically and in many other ways, and a good friend of Barack Obama politically and in many other ways. And therefore, I believe that I have not only the right, but the obligation to criticize the message of this, of this radical Jesuit. And uh, especially since we've been dealing with Obama all of these years, we have to be very cautious about the adulation he is about to receive. I've been getting emails from anti-Catholic groups such as the Sierra Club. I should say anti-religious groups. These enviro environmental groups are, as you know, vehemently anti-religion. They're almost all worshipers of Gaia and of nature. All of a sudden, they're in love with the Pope. Now, why is it that even crackpot groups like the Sierra Club would be in love with the Pope? Because they finally have hitched their wagon to a religious figure who they can use to sell their their lies and so we're going to talk a little bit about that and we're going to show you where some of the politicians stand on the pope on the pope's embrace of cuba who harbors killers like the castros and keeps people in prison and says nothing about the political prisoners or we're going to talk about rubio who was an ignoramus uh, you know Let's say Christie's a very intelligent man and certainly presidential material. Rubio is the opposite. Rubio is simply a child that they found somewhere who they've latched on to because he has a, an O on the end of his name and they think he can attract Hispanic voters. It's, it's ludicrous. He should drop out as soon as possible. We should uh, understand that. He's not doing uh, the conservative cause any good by uh, flip-flopping every day and being in favor of massive illegal immigration. And I think the best way to begin today, we'll talk about other things, such as the FBI is in the camp with Hillary Clinton. The FBI is refusing to cooperate in the Hillary Clinton email server probe. Did you expect anything different? Did you expect Obama's FBI to actually try to get to the bottom of Hillary's lies and the missing emails? What, you actually thought they were going to help you get to the truth? I didn't. So let's begin at the beginning, and that is with the visit of this communist, socialist, Leninist pope. And again, I have to direct you to the most important book of 2015 and possibly 2016 on this and other issues. It is my magnus opus. It is my Principia Mathematica. It's called Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture. And at the risk of offending you by again referring you to the chapter on religion, chapter eight, Lenin's Pope is who I named Francis. And it's a very important, it's a very important name. It will stick with him. And the chapter is broken into politicizing the papacy, channeling Lenin, the power of religious authority, the Pope attacks free speech. What is the Pope defending? The Pope promotes junk science, the real agenda behind the climate change scam and the Marxist encyclical on care for our communist home. It's a very important chapter. And I want to just read one piece from it before I go on to Lenny Bruce who was the father of stand-up comedy in his great piece, Religion Incorporated, because I grew up on his uh, comedy, his cynicism, his sarcasm, his genius, his humor. And I want to give you a little history for a minute. I know when you say history, oh boy, you want to hang up on the show right away. Yesterday, I introduced you to 
government zero, zero religion, Lenin's Pope. And I want you to understand that the Pope is not God. He's not a son of God. He's a man. And I don't understand how people can't understand this. He was originally a bartender. And as many individuals realize in life, there are only a few ways to get ahead. In, actually, a bouncer, I read. And there are only a few ways to get ahead in life. In Stendhal's time, it was the red or the black. Either you went into the military or the church. And perhaps it was not much different in the Peronista Argentina of the Pope's youth. So he went into the, into the red. He went into the church. And he was such a good politician that he became higher and higher up in the hierarchy. Much like Obama, he became higher up. And then he was picked to be the Pope. And I want to write, I want to read something to you, Politicizing the Papacy, page 193 of a must-read book. And I want Catholics to buy this book. I want Catholics to buy this book for their husbands, their wives, their priests, to save us from this liar. Before it's too late, before you wake up with one salami hanging in the butcher store. Do you want to see the ex-Soviet Union in your town? That's what this man wants. The redistribution of wealth. Well, we'll tell you about the Vatican's wealth and how it's almost impossible to calculate and how this double-talking liar, this hypocrite, is in the long line of others. If you, when you say Pope, you think, oh, they're all greatly religious, wonderful men. No, he isn't. It's not different. There were good ones, there were mediocre ones, and there were evil ones. He is a political operative with all the earmarks of having been handpicked for his office. Page 193, Government Zero. It wouldn't be the first time the Vatican has been occupied by a political rather than a spiritual leader, Michael Savage. The papacy is 2,000 years old. It has had good periods and bad periods, as is any long-standing institution run by imperfect human beings. There were popes who were honest, wise, and deeply spiritual, and others who were morons, scoundrels, or worse. There were times when the papacy was the spiritual center of the Catholic faith, at times when it was little more than a political office, complete with rule over large areas of land, and armies commanded by the Pope to enforce that rule. Pope John XII was definitely an example of the latter. He was simultaneously the secular prince of Rome and the Pope, but he acted more like the pagan Roman Emperor Caligula. He was accused of turning the sacred palace into a whorehouse, fornicating with several women there, including his own niece, and then blinding his confessor. He put deviant liberals in Hollywood to shame. That's pious uh, John XII. I'm showing you that in the history of the papacy, there have been good and the bad. Why must you assume this is a good one? Can you understand that maybe this is a lying bad one? Who is simply a front man for the new world order? Who wants to steal your way of life? Is it possible? Can you open your mind to that, all you rigid Catholics who think that by attacking his policies, I'm attacking the church? I am the best defender of the Catholic Church in this country. I defended the Pope during World War II, meaning I wasn't on the radio during World War II, obviously. But the Pope during World War II was unfairly called Hitler's Pope. I spent show after show uncoupling that lie, the liberal lie. Pope John was eventually deposed as both ruler of Rome and Pope but subsequently regained both offices, brutally mutilating prisoners captured in his victory. He is said to have died in the act of committing adultery. Pope Benedict IX was also accused of rape, murder, and other atrocities, while Pope Boniface VIII demolished several towns while feuding with a powerful family. The ironically named Pope Innocent IV tortured her heretics, including Galileo, for the heresy of claiming the earth revolved around the sun. Now we have a pope who is trying to banish scientists who claim that anthropomorphic warming is not established science. They're going back to the 1500s in their attacks upon reason, upon doubt, upon skepticism, upon science itself. This is not science, this is politics to say that all the science is in on global warming. As a trained scientist myself, I will reiterate, there's no such thing as all the science is in on anything. In fact, the definition of science is that it is always open to new discoveries, always open to new evidence, always open to new analysis. That's the definition of science. Only a bigot like Obama would say that 98% of all scientists agree. What does that mean? 
You can buy off a scientist like you buy off a cheap trick on, on Ellis Street. What's a scientist? It's a PhD without a, without a grant who you can buy. What do you mean a scientist? And so I want to conclude from the chapter in Government Zero. That's not to say the Pope should have no political opinions. Pope Pius XI, who was actually a sitting Pope when the Reichs Con, the Reichs Concordat was signed, said this. When politics come near the altar, then religion, the church, the pontiff have not only the right, but the duty to give directions and indications to be followed by Catholics. When politics come near the altar means when governments infringe upon or attempt to influence the church on spiritual matters. That is precisely the opposite of the Pope today using his position as spiritual leader to influence politics. But that's what Pope Francis has been doing. Not only has he abused the trust placed in him for political purposes, he sold out to the socialists who'd love to abolish all religion if they could get away with it. Pius XII was wrongly called Hitler's Pope. The charge didn't fit the facts, as the author who wrote the book eventually admitted himself. But Pope Francis can very appropriately be called Lenin's Pope. Let's consider the facts supporting that charge, and then I spend thousands of words and pages on this in Government Zero, channeling Lenin, etc., and what he's doing and what he will do. And you as an American should understand that your church, if you're Catholic, opposed the very socialist communist principles that this pope is dancing with. Now, I understand that religion is such that people who go into religion, really strongly religious people, generally don't like to think. Generally, they don't. They like dogma. They like to follow dogma. They like to follow doxies. They don't like to think. They hate thought. That's the truth, which is why so many intelligent people declare themselves to be atheists, because they don't want to be entrapped by dogma they don't believe in. And they have a lot of trouble with it. Some people are good people who are atheists, by the way, and some people who are very religious are bad people. So let's not make, make assumptions that all atheists are bad and all religious people are good. I've met all, all kinds of people in all all uh, phases of religion or no religion, and they all vary, of course. But the point is that it's very hard for Catholic people listening to me criticizing the Pope's message to not automatically jump to the assumption Michael Savage is anti-Catholic. That's something the Catholic League would do immediately. But I'm going to do it anyway because I feel that the world is under such threat right now from the new emerging Soviet Union of the world that the last remaining people in the media, writers, uh, essayists, uh, broadcasters who see the truth have to speak it out. Thomas Sowell wrote a great essay on this. The left has found its, its pope. Of course they have. If he didn't exist, they would have created him. This is now interesting to watch in the next few days as this deceiver comes to town or to America. You're going to see people who disavowed religion their whole lives spit on the Catholic Church for 20, 30 years, genuflecting before this pope. Wait till you see this this charade. Wait until you see all of the jerks in the media who are atheists and hate religion. All of a sudden, the drug addicts will be espousing the wonders and the beauty of Pope Francis. Why, if only they could get him on The Tonight Show. Why, if only they could get him on one of the nighttime shows. Wouldn't that be wonderful? So again, don't confuse what I'm doing. I criticize his message, not the church. Although he himself, I believe, knows better. He knows exactly what happens when a country gives up free enterprise. He knows exactly what happens when the individual is, uh, let us say, subjugated to the state. He knows what happens. Everyone suffers. He, he should know better. So why is the commander of the wealthiest religious organization in the world, why is he doing this? We're going to talk about the wealth of the Roman Catholic Church. And then I have a little treat for you as I, uh, as I take apart the enviro-religio-industrial complex. It's a new phrase you didn't hear it anywhere else. The enviro-religio-industrial complex. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Ladies, you just... Well, I'm a Roman Catholic. For me, the Pope is a successor.